Hey guys, Des Letter Magic here, and oh boy, bad week for Watsy and Google and Budweiser and uh, Disney, and <laughs> you know what? They're all getting what they deserve. Stay tuned for the Supreme Court ruling party. Oh, I love when people get what they deserve. But anyway, uh, let's start with Mark Rosewater making everybody mad again with his out of touch and sensitive nonsense. So you know how they announced The Walking Dead and people are like, I don't want The Walking Dead in my magic universe that's from a different thing, <laughs> not only a property that absolutely went straight off a cliff and everybody hates now, but like still, like they don't want that in their game. And then finally Watsy had to come out and say, okay, within nine months we will always print an in-universe version of any card that we print elsewhere in a universes beyond product. And then they proceeded to not do that. Then they did do that. Then they doubled down and then they went back on it again. And now guess what they're announcing? Which is odd because Mark's not even in charge of this from what I understand. So that's just keep that in the back of your mind. But uh, somebody asked him on his blog and, you know, he's got some balls for answering questions like this. I got to give him that. Uh, what kind of feedback would it take for Watsy to consider printing more in-universe cards? I can tell you that I used to spend a ton to keep up with modern, but the lore dissonance of... Alt uh, uh, <laughs> he put UB and I'm like, <laughs> it's not uh, blue black. It's... Ultimate Brothers is what popped into my head, so they they just better not. I don't even want to give them ideas. Universes Beyond is what UB stands for, so I can tell you that I used to spend a ton of money to keep up with modern, but the lore dissonance of Universes Beyond bothers me so immensely that I'd rather not play at all all than be forced to put Universes Beyond cards in my decks to optimize them. Now, see, I like how he put to optimize them. He's not just like, I'm forced to do it, period, the end. You ain't forced to do anything. Play, play at a power level that's comfortable with who you're playing with. Unless it's, like, highly competitive, then take fun and enjoyment and throw it out the window. Fairness, whatever. Whatever you can do within the rules of the game to beat the other person, do it. I mean, if you can improve your deck by 1%, do it. We ain't here to have fun. We're here to win 100K, you know what I mean? But a lot of people get stuck in that mindset, or they, you know, pretend they're in that mindset. They're what I call the pro wannabes. They show up to FNM, beat up on little kids with their, you know, they show up with a three thousand dollar deck and a one thousand dollar Honda, and uh, clearly do not have their priorities straight. They also usually don't have their teeth straight. It's an archetype. You, I'm, I'm like literally describing the person that you're already picturing in your head. We've all seen him. Now, modern, at least when I used to play like five, ten years ago, was um, highly competitive, high power level. That that's just like you knew what you're getting into, you know. And the commander that's a mixed bag, and standard was like entry level but competitive if you're at F and M, you know. And the kitchen table free for all is just like whatever. Let's have fun. And then you got the the casuals who tend to buy the off the shelf, you know, thirty dollar experience decks, or like the four way, you know, game night stuff for like fifty bucks or whatever. Which nothing wrong with that. But those are generally the accepted categories. So like, I just wanted to throw out there. He's not like, oh, you guys are like holding a gun to my head, saying you got to run this you know, stupid My Little Pony card, or you're not going to be winning anything ever again. But it is modern. So like, okay, I don't know this person. I'll cut him some slack. So they say I would very eagerly, in all caps, jump back in with my wallet wide open <laughs> if I could buy in-universe variants of the UB cards. Wow, you cannot give a harsher statement than that without getting downright impolite. This is so, like, in your face. What do you think Mark said about it? Let me just let me just summarize. Well, you don't exist, so too bad. That's what Mark basically said. So what he really said was, we've done the research. There just isn't a large enough group that wants universe within cards. We don't think the product would sell well enough to warrant making it. Wrong. I don't have access to any of your numbers. I don't have access to any of your data. It's all bullshit. It's all just you talking to 10 people on Twitter who don't even know what fun or enjoyment is. They're just, you know, pros or wannabe pros. Or at this point, I'm convinced just either delusional mental patients or people outright trying to ruin the game on purpose. Trolls, saboteurs, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if they took a survey that said, well, do you care about the magic lore or not? Because, well, they did. They commonly take surveys like that. And then they translated that into, well, if you aren't obsessed with the Lord, then you don't care if there's, you know, a character from this anime or whatever you've never heard of in your commander deck with the rest of the lore. Like, I know the story. I'm not an absolute story maniac, but I know what's going on. I know what the characters are about, usually. I don't want that dumb crap in my deck. 
The backlash was so nuts. If I read it, just speaking of Reddit, go to Reddit. Go see what the people had to say about this. Let me summarize that. Uh, Mark, you're wrong. You're clueless. You're out of touch. What the hell? No, there's a ton of us and we would buy it. Shut up. Also, you formerly absolutely agreed in what appears to be a legal contract or, well, legally binding statement to active customers that you would do this and then went back on it. All right, another black eye. Um, usually... On a pretty regular basis, a somewhat predictable basis, they tend to uh, throw out a little, you know, get a thousand coins for 200 coins or whatever deal. Occasionally it's gems on Arena. Uh, this time around, it was arguably two weeks late. I mean, it's not on a tight, tight schedule. They, they want it to be unpredictable, but I think there's a range. They might even use like a random number generator to come up with it, but... Uh yeah, people have been waiting, and then I guess this time around, I'm getting all different um, accounts of, of what really happened here. So it's making it hard to find out what happened here for sure. Uh, some people are saying it was 950 gems to buy 1,000. I think I heard the margin was 25. I heard that it was kind of acceptable, then wasn't. Like, it was like 500 for 400, then they pulled it and made it worse, or they upped it, or, I, I don't know, I, I don't have evidence of this, and I guess I just didn't log in that day, because I really haven't been touching Arena, neither has anybody. They ruin Standard, they rig drafts, those are the two things Arena does. Now, let me just back up a little bit. In the entire history of the game, launch day, Black Friday, random holidays... Right before the launch of major cash events, they have never, not one time, put gems on sale. It is basic trap marketing 101 to not too often and not predictably, but just enough to get people to dump some money into the game for FOMO reasons, fear of missing out if you've never heard that term, to just randomly put something on sale, or your, your main currency. Because you will see not just 10 times your normal purchases, I would dare say 100. 100x would be actually a little bit conservative. So from greedy, clueless people's um, perspective, well, but th those people would have bought gems anyway. Like the, anybody who would just be like, oh man, let's load up 100 bucks, let's go, I'm set for life, you know? Well, they would have bought, you know, gems 20 bucks at a time over time. So if we put it, you know, 20% off, we're just going to lose money. That, that's just money out of our pocket. Why would we ever put the main thing on sale when we could just put the items on sale? And the answer is because you want the teeter-totter effect. I'm sure it's called something else, but that's what I'm calling it. So this is famous in Pokemon Go. There have been, like, studies on this. So people will dump, you know, 100 bucks on, like, I don't remember, 9,000, 12,000, some absurd amount of coins. And you're just like, this is like a lifetime supply. And then you look into it, you're like, well, okay, I have so much. Let's expand my inventory a couple times. I don't really feel like cleaning this up. I don't really feel like, you know, trading in Pokemon, see what's good, what's bad. It takes, like, an hour. Let's, let's just make it bigger. I have so many coins. Look, I, I'm still above 10,000. And then, well, yeah, I don't like the cost of this, but if I bought this now, okay, I get a bun I could get really far ahead. I could buy this egg bundle or the, the incubators. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm sitting on eight thousand coins. I might as well, you know, spend five something on on some remote raids. I mean, it's a one day event, and then eventually, after two months, you find out, yeah, okay, I I had a lifetime supply, and I'm now out of them. What the hell? And then you're like, well, I did blow through them. I had a good time. I got really far in the game. My team is so much more powerful, but we're not doing that twice. And then they go up and they're like, oh, hey, 20% off this weekend, which they, they commonly don't do that either, by the way. I don't know if they've ever done that, but uh, there have been like five to one reward things in like the Android store and that kind of stuff. But you want the teeter-totter effect where people are like, this is like a once or twice a year thing that they do. They do not do it very often. You can't predict it. It's 24 hours, take or leave it. Or it's just, it's a weekend thing. It's Black Friday, whatever. I need to load up. As long as it's not predictable and people can't see it coming and plan accordingly and just buy up their yearly supply for a discount that they would have bought anyway, you're good. So you want the, wow, I could join, you know, 100 drafts with this or whatever, you know, 20 drafts, like, I'll never burn through these. And then once they're in your account, you're like, I have so much, I'm never going to spend them. And it makes you play more. And then you spend them, then you get used to playing more, and then you're out of, out of uh, gems. And you're like, oh, well, okay. I did have fun, though, which, I mean, if you're playing Arena, you'd have to be an idiot to not see that it's rigged. I've literally proved it in two documentaries, as have people doing harder research than me on Reddit. 
Oh, oh, and then the devs. The devs of Arena itself came out and admitted that the game was rigged over and over and over and over and over. Like, they, in their own code, they came out and they're like, yeah, there is a hand assistance program. Yeah, there is rigged matchmaking in, in uh, uh, not Commander, whatever, whatever, Arena Commander, Brawl. <laughs> this is after the community roasted them on it and says, this has to be happening. And then they came out and confirmed it. And the people were like, the, the, the doubters, the, the conspiracy theory people, you're just dumb, you're just shuffle deniers. Well, they shut up real quick. But anyway, okay, I'm never going to stop making that tangent rant. You need the feast and famine FOMO teeter-totter. That is what you need, okay? That or, like I said in many earlier videos, bare minimum. The I had it and I lost it and I want it back system. Where for like a week they just go all access on like draft. You could draft all you want, but it's phantom. You don't, you don't get to keep the cards. And people are like, man, I ran four drafts today. Over the weekend, I ran 12 drafts. Look at that. It was so fun. I got really good at it. I, you know, I upped my rank and then all of a sudden it's cut off and you don't see a phantom event for the next three months. You're like, man, I missed this. I want that back. I had it at one point and now I want it. You know what? That was my test drive of it. I'm getting out the wallet. I want to get back to where I was before and I don't care if I have to pay for it. They haven't done jack squat like that. Not a damn thing. Even MTGO does all access events once in a while. And this is why. It's the tempt you get you in, first one is free thing. They haven't done anything that even resembles marketing, or as some people call it, you know, mobile game style manipulations. Like, okay, but do you really think they haven't done it because they're above that? They ain't above shit. Okay, this is Watsy. They refuse to hire black people, then lie about it, then admit it, and then get called out for illegal hiring practices of only hiring black people, and then proceeding to like bring it back and then continue to not hire black people. Okay. That's, that's a level. That's a caliber of Seattle. People we're talking about here. If you think you can count on them to do the right thing, you're on your damn mind. Now, if they were aware of any of these, they would have done it. They're just too stupid. It's just that simple. They, they don't even have a marketing person on staff is my understanding. Their marketing is done by some third party people. And it's just like graphics and advertising. It's like old school nineties marketing. It's not like here's a business plan and strategy marketing. I don't know how they're this stupid. I don't have an answer for you. But anyway, that's what they're really screwing up with Arena. Now, the one thing that they had going for them is you log in every once in a while and everybody gets hyped and it blows up on social media and everybody tweets it out. Don't forget your free gems today. It's like you, know, you pay 50, you get 250. Like they've done really good 5 to 1, 10 to 1 giveaways. I think I got 900 coins for 100 one time. And they've been getting narrower and narrower and less frequent, and it's all because they're trying to squeeze a little bit more money out. But people immediately caught them on it, called them out, and now they get negative press, and more people are like, this is the straw that broke my back. I'm out. I I'm not doing it. Look at all the other games that could be playing right now. Pal World is pretty lit. Baldur's Gate 3? Hell, Witcher's 3 is on sale. Like, come on. Or maybe they say, you know what? Flesh and Blood ain't dead yet. Let's look into that. That is what you don't want to happen, Watsy, you morons. So I would cut the, the little tiny 1% ripoffs that you're trying to do on people. I guess in this case, it's more like 300%. And put your freaking gems on sale. Get the teeter-totter rolling, okay? I'm immune to that effect because I'm not an idiot. But a lot of people are that stupid and impulsive. Especially shallow, emotionally driven, unstable net deckers who have to win. They also tend to be really stupid with their money, unfortunately, or for, well, fortunately for Watsy. What else are they screwing up? Well, the uh, murders at Karlov Manor products have gotten so bad that stores are trying to return them to the distributors, and the distributors aren't even returning their phone calls, um, and they're just, like, denying it. They're just like, no, we don't want it back. What are we going to do? Like, prop up a table with it? Burn it for fuel to heat our warehouse? There, there is nothing. I just, <laughs> It's a trash product. It's garbage. It's too convoluted. It had some good commander cards in it, but at a certain point, you don't want to rebuild your commander deck every two damn weeks when a set comes out, okay? Also, if you didn't see my last video, um, the gist of it is the people at Wa uh, Watsi, what's the difference? Card Kingdom, um, after unionizing, really screwed up their benefits because it's clearly not like a professional union runner that's in charge. And it, it's like 50 to 100 people. That is so stupid at a semi-skilled to unskilled job. And now so many people have quit or gotten fired that they're bringing in temps. And the temps are making more than the union people. It's amazing how socialism doesn't work once you get there. Also, they've now priced themselves out of Seattle. They're moving to another city in Washington. Unions, they're slightly cheaper than shooting yourself in the foot, but about the same amount of damage. 
unions, they still think that child labor laws and, and overtime, the two only good things that come out of socialist tendencies against uh, like 1910 America, mean that we should keep that boulder rolling. Now that boulder ran its course. That, that's, that's about as far as we need to get. Well, that and anti-monopoly laws, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle, obviously. I'm actually very like lefty to centrist when it comes to financial stuff and programs and social safety nets, but I'm also like, hardcore dictator at like stopping people from spending their food stamps on like drugs somehow with convoluted ways that they do that or you know what stop giving them food stamps if they're on drugs stop letting them walk around in public and, and not be detained if they're on drugs and a danger to everybody around them I have all kinds of political views. So, also, I guess if you missed it, Magic Con Chicago was a disaster because complete idiots laid out that place and they just blasted the main stage speakers directly into the face and ears of a bunch of autistic people who almost had to drop and then ranked high and could have had 75 grand. I don't know if that was the total prize pool or the top prize, but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of messed up. I had some opinions on that. So they screwed up Arena, screwed up their products, screwed up everything, um, the distribution, margins, they're, they're releasing stuff too often. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say, is uh, Card Kingdom is, is extra pissed because they're releasing stuff too often, which means the whole crunch time, open it up, mandatory overtime, we got to get this out, we got to get the pre-orders out day one. You know, sort the product, you got 48 hours, let's all just burn it up. Instead of like four, five, six times a year, it's, it's literally every two weeks. I guess for the ultra minor stuff they'd sell sealed, I don't know, but some of the stuff they mentioned by name, I would have thought they would have sold sealed. Kind of weird. Watsy, if I were you, I would just give them a bulk price, do it under the table, sell them singles. Just cut the sheets and give them to them. It is so wasteful to make that much plastic. It is such a waste of human capital and time and resources to have to un take them out like it's you know Willy Wonka looking for the golden ticket it is the stupidest thing it's right up there with that Futurama clip where he takes the machine assembles an Oreo and it's like the most convoluted time wasting thing ever he gets the Oreo breaks it apart licks it <laughs> just undoes it immediately that's what I think of that and the Wonka scene every single time I think of bulk opening operations and not just because I've participated in them just give them the damn singles pre-sorted in the ratios. Oh my God, this is so stupid. I, I know a lot of people in the community would lose their minds, but I think the more down to earth, like base people would just be like, you know what? If it saves me money and if it saves the environment, just sell them the damn singles. They're going to open them in the exact same damn ratios anyway. You might as well just get the damn boxes and the booster mylar out of the equation. Also, last thing people are pissed off about, um, follow-up products are like three, four, five hundred dollars on pre-order. Who would have thought? Now, Watsy don't control what people can do on eBay and stuff, okay? That's, that's whatever. But a lot of times, some of the people selling pre-orders, some of the bigger websites, I'm not going to name names because I don't know, but, you know, I'm just saying. A lot of them get insider information about what the new price is going to be. In fact, about, I think, six weeks out minimum is when my distributor would have told me what the prices were. Now, we already knew because they never changed. The MSRP was the MSRP. It was public. We knew that. Now, they would announce their price on it, but it would vary plus or minus three bucks, you know? Like, we knew a fat pack was 15 bucks, 15 to 18, whatever it was. We, we just knew that. That's what it always was. A booster box was 78 to 82, depending upon your volume and, and like factors and like gas prices and shipping. But now that they eliminated MSRPs and they can kind of creep stuff on and down, as soon as Watsy announces to the distributors what the price is, somebody there could leak it. As soon as they start telling one or two of their biggest customers, they could leak it and then it comes out and then everybody's on the same page and the, the regular ass boxes are going for like three, 400 on pre-order. It's ridiculous. But the, the best thing, the most ridiculous thing is from the cards I've seen, it's going to be worth it. You're going to be pulling a grand worth of cards out of that box. Now, the only thing that's going to be worth money is the collector's one. That's why... And I'm just saying, uh, four, 400, 300, I've seen it up and down. I've seen different screenshots. I don't even know if they're real or not. But uh, that kind of money for a basic-ass booster box? I don't know about that. And then the commander decks, I think those are overpriced. I, they're, they're like 250, 300. I, th I think I've seen as high as 350. Nah, they ain't worth that. And if they are, they ain't worth more than that. So if you think you're going to gold rush it and sell them for five, you're out of your damn mind. That ain't going to happen. Maybe with a split apart cost. But remember, there's four of them. And the split apart cost usually only applies to uh, one or two of the decks that you split apart and you're stuck with the other ones and they ain't worth nothing. This ain't no anthology thing, okay? Commander anthology, you could predict the price of that pretty good. 
what everybody's failing to consider is the number of players and customers falling off and just leaving, just leaving the customer pool and leaving their demand behind. That demand is gone. It is never coming back. All the investors seem to be not taking that into account because they look at the quarterlies and they're like, no, Magic made money. On how many customers and how much money per customer? Okay, we know there's stupid people left as whales in the community. That ain't news. They aren't going anywhere. They'll be the last to leave. What about the average Joe? What about active player numbers? What about FNM attendance? Show me that on a report. I'd love to see it. They will never do that because it would be the end of their stock price. It would be everybody would panic sell their singles right now. So let me just tell you with some numbers I've seen. Not in financial advice or anything. I'm not that crazy, but I would maybe liquidate my singles right now. I think it's a good time to do that. I think it was a good time to do that a year or two ago. And uh, speaking of that, legacy card prices are still going down. So um, that's a completely separate news story that has nothing to do with anything I just said. Of course. Obviously. I mean... Yeah, so anyway, that's all the wonderful positive news in the magic world, um, and also the negative news along with it. <laughs> yeah, 100's up, isn't it? Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.